Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you 10 tips and tricks for using the lasso tool in Photoshop. Most actions in Photoshop begin with a selection, and the lasso is one of the primary tools you're going to use to make those selections. So let's dive into Photoshop and explore some of the hidden features of the lasso. The first tip is the ability to switch between the lasso and polygonal lasso on the fly. While using the lasso tool, hold down option to get the polygonal lasso tool. And with the polygonal lasso tool, rather than freehand drawing, you're going to click and make straight lines between anchor points. Now, if I let go of the option key, I'm back to a standard lasso. And then if I hold the hold down option or alt on a PC, I go back onto my polygonal lasso. So this is a great way to seamlessly combine both freehand and straight line selections. Now, if I'm on my polygonal lasso, I'm going to do command D to deselect and I want to freehand again, if I hold down option and start drawing, I will temporarily go onto my standard lasso tool until I let go of option and then I'll be back onto my polygonal lasso tool. All right, tip number two, shortcuts for adding, subtracting and intersecting selections. So selection modifications, meaning subtracting or adding to your selections is a lot easier with shortcuts. So let's say I have a selection here and I want to add to it. I can go up here, click on this, and then as I make a selection, it'll add to my existing one. If I want to remove from my selection, I can go to this icon here and then draw, draw out the areas that I want to subtract from my selection. And then finally to intersect, I can go on this and then whatever I draw, whatever selection I draw will intersect with the existing selection and that'll be all that's left. Now you can actually do all these without ever having to move your mouse up here to your options bar using shortcuts. So to add to my selection, I'm going to hold shift and then at making an additional selection. It'll add to my existing one. If I want to subtract, I'm going to hold down option before I start making my selection and then that'll subtract. And then to intersect, I'm going to hold both shift and option at the same time. And that allow me to intersect my selection. Okay. Tip number three is set feathering before making a selection. So if I wanted to make a soft selection, let's say of this area here to add some light. I could do that with some tricks after. However, in your lasso, you actually have the option to add some feathering. So here I could add, let's say 50 pixels of feathering. And now when I make a selection around this area and hit Q on my keyboard, you can see that my selection is feathered. I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit Q again and then hit deselect. To interactively access this without having to move your mouse, hit enter or return on your keyboard. That'll throw you into the options toolbar. You can then set it to what you want, hit enter or return again, and then you're back into your tool. So that's an interactive way to do that without having to move your mouse up to the options toolbar. Now, one word of warning, um, oftentimes you can forget that you added some feather to a selection, spend a lot of time making a new selection that you don't want any feather on. And unfortunately, there's no way for me to go back and get rid of the feathering here. So that leads us to tip number four, which is how to add feathering after you've made a selection. So let's go ahead and zero this out. I'm going to go ahead and make a rough selection of the area I want to lighten, but now I want to add feathering to it. So there's two ways to do that. One is in your contextual taskbar, go down here to feather selection, and then you can add your selection here. 
or you can go up to select, modify, feather, and you'll see it does have a shortcut, shift F6, and that will also allow you to feather your selection. So rather than feathering it up here, you can also feather it after the fact. One quick bonus tip here, another way to more interactively feather your selection is go into your quick mask, which is this icon here or Q on your keyboard, and then you can use your Gaussian blur to feather that selection. And the nice thing about this is you can interactively see how much or how little you're feathering it before you apply that feather, and then simply hit Q again to put it back into your running ant selection mode. Okay, tip number five is the magnetic lasso. And for this, let me just go to an image with more contrast. The magnetic lasso works kind of like an auto select mixed with a lasso tool. So with the magnetic lasso, you're gonna click and then start dragging it over an edge. Photoshop is gonna look for that edge and then put your lasso around it. Now you can see that I wasn't the most accurate here. So let's see what we can do to improve the use of this tool. So up here, this is how far away from your cursor is Photoshop looking for an edge. So you can interactively adjust that with your brackets keys, just like you can with a brush. The next thing is how much contrast is it looking for? In this image, we have a lot of contrast, so we can increase the contrast to let's say 50%. And now as I click and drag here, you'll see it probably does a better job of sticking to it. But here, again, I've kind of gone off, so I'm gonna hit escape and let's try this one more time, but let's increase our width to 30. And now you can see my lasso is doing a really good job of finding that edge. Now, even with all that, there are still a few mistakes. And that's the last thing I wanna show you here with the magnetic lasso. As you're making it, if it makes an errant point that you don't like, so let's see here, there, it made some errant points. What you're gonna do is hit delete until you get rid of them, and then you can continue. You can also click to set your own anchor points. And then finally, if you hold down option, you can switch to your polygonal lasso tool or hold down option, click and drag to go to your normal lasso tool. So just like tip number one, you can switch to your other lasso tools from within the magnetic lasso. Okay, next is tip number six, and I kind of mentioned this already, but that is adjusting the width of your lasso detection while you're making your selection. So in an image like this, let's say I want to select this box here. So I'm gonna start here and then start going up, but I wanna make sure my selection is smaller or my width. I can interactively do that with my bracket keys and just kind of control where my magnetic lasso is looking for contrast and looking for those edges. Finally, if I want to close my brackets or close my selection, I can do that by holding command and clicking, or I can do that by double clicking. So if I'm here, I can double click, that'll close my selection. Also, clicking enter on the keyboard will close your selection, while hitting escape on the keyboard will get rid of your selection. Okay, let's go on to tip number seven, and that is how to zoom in and out while using the lasso tool. So let's go back onto our normal lasso tool here, and I'm gonna go into this image here and let's zoom in. So we're working on this and now I want to zoom out. Well, I can't really access my zoom tool. So the way I'm gonna do this is 
first, make sure you're holding down Option so that when you let go of your mouse keys, you are not losing your selection. So if I let go of Option, you can see it's going to try to close that selection. So as you start making your selection, hold down Option and hold down Option after you start making the selection like this. And then while still holding down Option, you can use your scroll key to zoom in or out. You can also, while still holding down Option, do Command, Minus, or Plus on your keyboard to zoom in or out. And then you can continue making your selection from that point. So this is something when I first started using Photoshop, I ran into a lot, which is as you're making your selection and you're zoomed in, uh, you have to kind of push on that edge and really hope that it goes to where you want. Instead, just hold down Option and use your scroll or your plus minus to zoom in or out. Okay. Next is tip number eight, and that is removing anchor points. Now, I mentioned this already on the magnetic lasso. As you're going here, if it adds an anchor point you don't want, you can hit delete and continue hitting delete until you've gotten rid of those anchor points that you don't want. But you can also do that with the polygonal lasso tool. So here, I'm going to go ahead and make a point here, 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 and then I'm going to overshoot this one a bit. I want to redo it. I can hit delete and then redo it. So again, whether you're on the polygonal lasso or the magnetic, whatever the last point you made, you can use delete to get rid of it and keep walking backwards in your selection. Okay, tip number nine is you can quickly reselect your last selection. So if I've made a intricate selection with my lasso, let's go ahead, maybe on this image, I'm going to start here, hold down my option to get this straight line in there, maybe hold down option for this, and then click and drag without option, kind of just go around here. I'll make a somewhat rough selection here. And uh, let's say I spent quite a bit of time on this and then I deselect with Command D, but now I realize I want the selection again. Now I could do Command Z if I've not done anything since my deselect. But what if I went here and added a new solid color layer, hit OK. Now when I do Command Z, I can no longer deselect and retain that layer. So that's where this trick comes in, and that is Command Shift D, which reloads your last selection regardless of anything else you've done. So again, Command D to deselect, Shift Command D to reselect. Okay, which brings us to our last tip, and that is tip number 10. You can convert a lasso selection into a precise path. Now, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you know I'm a big fan of using paths to make selections. And if I wanted to convert this to a path to fine tune it, you can go to your paths and down at the bottom here, you'll see an icon that looks like a circle with four anchor points. Click on that and that'll convert your lasso selection or any selection into a path. Now that it's a path, I can go in here, fine tune it. And then once it's fine tuned, I can, with my path selected, go on the running ants and turn it back into a selection. So that's another way of fine tuning your lasso selections using paths. So there you have it. Those are 10 tips and tricks for using the lasso tool in Photoshop. If I forgot any, go ahead and mention them in the comment. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications, leave a like, share this video. And if you're interested in getting a leg up in Photoshop, check out my brand new Photoshop Creators Toolkit. It includes assets, overlays, textures, brush presets, titling presets, 
and more that you can use right now in Photoshop. And it also includes an hour of professional training on how to install and use all those assets. I've included a link to it in the description of this video. Go ahead and grab that. It is entirely free for a limited time. Otherwise, here's some other tutorials that you can check out and I will see you next time.